This video was sponsored by Skillshare. You got a skill you're interested in pursuing but don't know where to start? Well, Skillshare's got over 30,000 classes to choose from, guaranteed to help you out. If you're an aspiring rapper or producer, you can check out Samus' lyric writing course or DJ King Arthur's series on how to punch up the depth and quality of your sound when recording. Even if you're just starting out as a musician in general, they've got all types of classes on music fundamentals, like vocal training, music theory comprehension, the basics of playing piano and guitar, seriously, anything you're possibly thinking of. And hey, if you just recently started getting paid for what you like doing, there's a bunch of videos on there on filing as a small business just in time for tax season. The first thousand people who go to the link below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and after that it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription anyway, so if that sounds good, definitely scroll down to the description below and click the link. Hi guys, Rap Critic here. Let's talk about Polo G. Now, dude was on my radar for a while as a next level MC, someone just to cut above the current roster of rappers dabbling in the emo rap sound at the time. I feel like I haven't heard anyone explicitly call his style that, but it does fit in with the current theme of lackadaisically somber sing-song deliveries over beats that either have those echoey guitar plucks from a slowed down indie rock sample or, or those really intense piano riffs that sound like something out of a 90s medical drama, with the rapper usually bringing up more personal subject matter. That is, amongst the myriad of other lyrics that are kind of still just about how rich they are. But to that end, Polo G was an MC that always felt like he stood out as someone you got a real piece of his life from with every song you heard from him. And sure, he had 2019's Pop Out, which charted just under the top 10 on Billboard, but when I heard he cracked a number one single with Rap Star, I was eager to check out the song that finally put a big mainstream spotlight on the guy. And... It's I. Caught the BMW, new deposit, I picked up another bag, like fuck it, I'm a cow while I'm in it. Like, even starting with the hook, when I hear something strikes number one, I expect an earworm of a chorus to come with it. But no, the hook doesn't really leave that much of an impression with any lyrics or like super catchy melody you want to sing along to. In fact, the main chorus is so kind of meandering and forgettable, it didn't even register that it was the hook until it came back the second time. I had planes flying across, screaming money, counting chains, clanking shit, I guess that's how it sound when you win. And I gotta say, for a song that's about celebrating the life of being a rich, successful rap star, there's like Eeyore levels of melancholy in the delivery of most of these lyrics. I ain't joking, do it sound like I'm kidding. No, no, it, it really doesn't. Actually, it doesn't sound like you're joking or having any fun at all, so I'm not sure why someone would even think that. And I've been making like 2000 a minute. I don't know about you, but if I was making $2,000 a minute, I think I could muster up a little bit more enthusiasm than this. And you know, like I said, Polo G's a more complex guy than the average mainstream rapper, so you understand when he makes a song called Rap Star, it's gonna give you the ups and downs of the experience, right? And later on in the verses, I really feel like he does that. Like, especially in the second verse, where he goes more in depth about his experience with trying to deal with mental health issues in a world where you have to fend for yourself. Looking for some real, he's stuck in a deep search. Anxiety killing me, I just wanna leave Earth. And running into problems with connecting with people in an authentic way because of those issues. When they ask if I'm okay, it just make everything seem worse. Trying to explain your feelings sound like something you rehearsed. And in fact, I really enjoy how he ends the first verse. I've been getting how to have how my insecurities. Taking different pills, but I know it ain't. Just the way the lyrics about struggling with his past trauma builds up to the line that gets cut off, making you yourself fill in the words for a narrator who sounds like he just suddenly came to the realization that he's been functionally using those drugs to cope through his trauma. And having that thought that if he knows these drugs aren't really healing them, then it's probably hurting him. But then the hook comes in immediately after that cut off. He's taking different pills, but I know it ain't. Cop the BMW, new deposit, I picked up another bag, like fuck it, I'm a cow while I'm in it. And I get it, the moral of the story is money doesn't actually make you happy, right? But like, if the person who just said money doesn't buy happiness to you just bought a luxury car on a whim while counting a huge bag of money for what they're gonna buy next, kinda muddles the message a bit, don't you think? And it definitely makes it harder to maintain sympathy for how supposedly super sad they are. Although in this case, I mean, I can believe that Polo G isn't actually happy, cause you know, he certainly doesn't sound like it. Like, just on a certain level, this track just doesn't have, like, the panache and more fleshed out upbeat musicality of a typical song that would get this popular. There's a sense of unpolishedness with this track. Like, this wasn't actually to actually supposed to be the big hit single, you know? But, you know, as soon as you hear the parts that got memed, it immediately makes sense what propped up the song's popularity. Looking so deep into your eyes, I can read your thoughts, so shut the fuck up, I mean, please don't talk. And you understand the hashtag relatable reason why it stuck out, right? It's that feeling of when you're getting pissed off at something someone's saying to you, but you catch yourself in the moment of realizing a response is only going to make things worse, so you try to de-escalate by rewording what you wanted to say. And I guess getting memed is just kind of how the charts are run these days, so if that's what ends up making a song pop for a talented, more emotionally intricate artist who wouldn't typically get the spotlight otherwise, hey, get that money. Of course, there's also the other lyric that got memed. I've 
she don't love a hoe, I think fuck, she can't get near me. Only bitch I give a conversation to a series. Which, I get why it popped for some folks, but it's such a basic bitch telling off the haters line that it feels annoying that this got popular amongst the sea of other better lyrics he's written. And the more I think about these lyrics, the more the song in general just feels like there's a through line about him just not listening to the women in his life. Although, we seem to be getting conflicting information about the actual relationship dynamic, at least if we were to assume he's talking to the same woman the whole time. I mean, in the video, it's the same woman he's hanging out with, so I assume he's talking about the same girl. But at first, he's talking about sex with a girl that's so hot he's apparently willing to go in raw and have a child over it. I bet she gonna be loud when I'm in it, and we might have a child of a heart. But then he immediately follows it with, that's right, I don't want to listen to any woman after I'm done having sex with them, even the ones I possibly might have put a child inside of. But then he reveals he knows so deep the contours of your heart, one need not speak, for we already understand what need be said. Looking so deep into your eyes, I can read your thoughts. Sir. But then... Shut the fuck up, I mean, please don't talk. Showcasing a man who's clearly having issues with communicating with his girlfriend in a way that's not confrontational. And then the girlfriend stabs him. I don't know, man. I wasn't really listening. She said something about slicing something up. I think she's gonna make, like, a pie or something. <laughs> oh, God! So, uh... Guess that connection wasn't as deep as he suspected. Well, overall, I give this a three and a half out of five. Don't get me wrong, it's certainly not a bad track. It just feels a little lackluster for someone whose quality as an artist I'm familiar with. Like, it's Polo G, so it's still lyrically more in depth than the average rapper on autopilot, but it definitely still feels like autopilot, you know? And I know, the melancholy in the delivery is supposed to reflect the deeper turmoil behind the achievements and success. But as a person listening, it's just hard to get into the celebratory mood of most of the lyrics when they're delivered so unhappily. It's just too dour to serve as the good time party jam for me, but there's also too much time dedicated to the look at my success flossy shit for it to be as impactful as his other tracks often feel. And while I wish him much success and many chart topics for the future, this one just didn't grab me as much as I'd want it to. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell button afterwards because the bell is what actually alerts you to new episodes. And if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing, check out my link tree for Twitch streams, merch, movie and album review podcasts, and any other stuff I'm up to. So check all that fun stuff out and I'll catch you next time. Peace.